Hello and welcome to the 46th episode of Fresh Off The Reel. My name is Lib. And my name is the 26th annual Pat. 26th? 26th, that's my age. Oh. <laughs> that's t- it's topical because today we're talking about the 95th <laughs> annual Academy Awards. Ooh. A couple... A couple nights ago, more like last week. Uh, <laughs> a couple of nights isn't isn't too inaccurate. It was on Sunday. Yeah, it was on Sunday. We're recording this on Wednesday, so yay! Oh, we had some time to digest the show, come to terms with the winners and losers of the event. Uh, if you watched our previous episode, the bonus about our predictions, or follow us on Twitter, you probably already know how we feel. But yeah, it's uh, it's Oscars time, baby. All right, so let's just let's just get straight into it. Uh, first things first, just like the show as a whole was actually pretty good this year. They didn't fuck up like last year. It was actually really really funny. The jokes were good. Everything yeah, they, was good. They, uh, they did this thing right where instead of stopping the show at a fucking halt after every award to get a unfunny comedian to tell an unfunny joke or um, to have some kind of pseudo skit. I'm looking at you, Amy Schumer. Um, they just kind of focused. And they, they just focused on the awards. They just they gave out the awards. They told jokes, kind of. But, like, overall, they really did, like, just stick to telling awards. And, like, they, the jokes were woven into the, into a way that, like, they didn't, like, stop to tell jokes. They just told jokes as they were speaking naturally. And overall, the show flowed just very well. Uh, it, was, it was entertaining. It was a fun watch. Yeah, they, they, the host was uh, Jimmy Kimmel. He was actually a really good host. Uh, they did, he did do like one like kind of skith joke thing, like where he went into the crowd and spoke to a few people. But yeah, that was like one. And that I, was honestly, fine. Like it, um, it didn't last too long. Um, it kind of tied into the cocaine bear skit, which again wasn't too too long. And and it, it, again, like they had cocaine bear up there to give out an award, and so it's kind of woven in there pretty well, I think. Yeah, the, the, it felt like an older style Oscars. It felt like a '90s Oscars. Like it was, it was literally just the awards and the performances for best original song, and then that was it. Like they, they, they did the awards. They did the performances. There was a couple of jokes. The host did a few like jokes at the beginning, jokes at the end, jokes in the middle, and that's it. And it was good. It was really, really good. It was a fun watch. Uh, we like I set up a drinking game for myself because I thought it was gonna be a really dumb show like last year. I barely drank. Like it was great. <laughs> yeah, we we like we just drank casually. Like you know, we just having a night with the guys. <laughs> yeah, I was I was expecting to get shit faced because of how cringe the show would have been, but I I there was only like two or three cringe moments, and I can't even remember what they were. Yeah, and th- there were definitely some moments where we're like, oh, okay, like there was one. It's, it's, it's the Oscars. There was one that I remember. There was it was a uh, Margot Robbie and Morgan Freeman, where were up on the stage and they were talking. I can't remember what they were talking about, but they were just cut off by a commercial break in the middle yeah, of speaking. That was, that was weird, I and mean, they didn't even like. I don't remember what award was was shown when that happened. But they did give out an award. Like, during that commercial break, an award was, was given. Yeah, I can't remember which one. But, yeah, it was it was so weird. It was so... It felt unnatural. And then what was even weirder was during the commercials... Uh, one of my friends pointed this out. During the commercials, there was, like, one or two frames that were that were of the Oscars. And then it cut back to the commercial. Like, what the hell happened? <laughs> But a weird, weird technical difficulties are kind of normal for the Oscars too. Yeah, it's a four-hour-long live show, which of course they uh, they made a joke about because every Oscars needs the obligatory "Wow, this award show is too long" joke, but do do nothing to make it shorter. Uh, you know that's the, just tradition at this point. The best thing about this year is that they learned their mistake from last year. They put all of the awards in the actual show. They didn't do like last year where they. They moved some awards to be announced during the red carpet event, which was really stupid because one of the things they they put there was uh, film editing, which is a terrible award to put uh, at the red carpet event, a, a, a show that no one really watches. We watched it this year. Yeah, we watched it this year because we thought that they would do something like last year. 
If that was the plan, they succeeded, but they're all idiots. <laughs> yeah, and the red, the red carpet, like, we could touch on the red carpet a little bit, because we, we did watch it, and, and it was it was fun, I think. That really is just uh, the celebrity gossip hour, we just kind of get to see all the celebrities walk in in their fancy outfits. Yeah, the, the outfits were pretty cool this year. All, all the dresses had, like, these wing parts that attached to, like, the wrists that looked like they had wings. Like, almost everybody had that. <laughs> I, I don't know what... I don't know. I didn't watch the Met Gala this year. Maybe that was part of it. I don't know. <laughs> I don't really care about like celebrity gossip. I'm not the kind of person that reads up on celebrity gossip and like on like those blog websites and all that. Um, but it was it was fun watching the red carpet show, seeing like it was basically just the the three hosts were basically just like interviewing the celebrities as they walked into the theater. Uh, they interviewed Kihoi Kwan, my boy. my boy, my goat, my king, my Chad. And he was just like talking about how happy he was to be there. Uh, he brought his wife, which is um, um, adorable. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah they interviewed the Jamie Lee Curtis, which is always fun because Jamie Lee Curtis is the best. This was Jamie she Lee Curtis's first Oscar nominee. Is it her first nominee? Like ever? First nominee and win. Yeah. Uh, but speaking of winners. Let's get into the show. Yeah, there was a couple. There was a couple of those, right? A couple of winners. Yeah, there's a. There is, to be exact, twenty three of them. So let's go. Let's go through them. So the first award that they, that they uh, uh, re announced, was the award for best animated picture. Yep. Um. So like, just just for some context, we watched this. Uh, we had a little watch party at my place with a couple friends. Um. One of our friends, Mister Mister Tune Man, he's been on the show. Really happy with this one. Uh, the first, uh, the first award went to uh, Pinocchio. Yep, Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. Uh, I'm not sure if I agree with that. Uh, my my prediction was um, was Puss in Boots. Uh, it's not my pick, but I don't. Uh, I wouldn't argue with it. Yeah, I wouldn't argue with it either. Like I, I the movie was really good. That's like a trend I think with this year's Oscars in general. Is um. I mean, I, I got a lot of happy wins. Like a lot of my predictions were, were ended up being true, and a lot of a lot of wins I'm happy about. But I I don't think there's a single award that was given that I was straight up like, no, this doesn't deserve it. Something was snuffed. Like I think every award was deserved. Yeah, I think so too. The closest the closest it gets to being that is this award, for me. Yeah, uh, that's fair. Yeah. Um, I I um, so I think the best movie on this list is is Puss in Boots. But I didn't really did not see Puss in Boots winning at the Oscars. It is, it's just not an Oscars movie. That's why I thought um, Marcel Deschamps with shoes on would win. Um, but hey, Pinocchio is another another Academy movie, so you know I, I I can I can see it. I'm not gonna argue. I find it weird that uh, they started with best animated feature film, though. Yeah. I don't know why that was the opening. The Academy for the. What, how many are we? 95. The Academy for the 95th year in a row show, goes to show that they don't care about animated movies. Hey, but Guillermo del Toro did make a, a beautiful speech on that. So he you know did. what? Maybe 96. It'll get <laughs> some respect. Because animated movies are our cinema. Later this year, Cross the Spider-Verse is coming out. Yeah, that, I'm excited, but also we got some news recently that has me a little worried. But anyway. What was it? Uh, they confirmed a love triangle for this movie as a subplot. Oh yeah, that's and, true. Yeah, they, they, said, they said that uh, it's going to be a, a romance between Miles and Gwen. Which is fine. I don't, I, don't, I don't mind a, a slow burn romance between Miles and Gwen. Uh, I mind a love triangle being shoved in there haphazardly because I don't think I've ever seen a love triangle that was written well. Yeah, Spider-Man 3. <laughs> I stand by what I said. <laughs> no, yeah, it wasn't written well. I'm, I'm not saying Spider-Man 3 was written well. Spider-Man 3 is terrible. The, the, the fucking Peter, Peter, Gwen, and uh, MJ, that was terrible. That was so stupid. And we're doing it again. Let's hope yeah. it's better this time. <laughs> All right, moving anyway, on. Yeah, moving on because that's uh, that's not what this is about. <laughs> the next, the next award given out, uh, they they actually did these at the same time, so they gave out uh, best supporting actor and best supporting actress. So the winner for best supporting actor was K Hui Kwan for everything ever all at once. Uh, Fuck yes! Room, yeah, the whole room uh, popped off when this happened. Yeah, we all loved this beautiful, beautiful man, and we're so happy to see him. 
um, win. You know, he, he won at the, the Golden Globes. He won here. He, he deserves it. After a long time of being out of film, um, you know, his first performance years. back, uh, he, he deserves this uh, wholeheartedly. Yeah, she, the, it's not she. I was looking at the Jamie Lee Curtis tweet. <laughs> he, uh, <laughs> he was, his speech was so touching. It was so great. I think the, his, his speech at the Golden Globes was better because yeah, you know, that, that one made me cry. But that the, one made me cry too, but also that was his first award, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So. This one, he, he was, he was so like thankful. He thanked everybody. He thanked Steven Spielberg for, for casting him in, uh, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Uh, he, he thanked his wife, which was amazing. He made it, he made a whole, his whole speech was about like the American dream. And like, it it was such a great speech. It was so good. Yeah, it's good. And he, he was kind of like breaking up the whole time. You could, you could tell that he was like, just really happy in that moment, you know? Um, he definitely, he definitely loved doing that movie. I, I hope he continues see. to love doing whatever he's in going forward. Yeah, I he, hope so. He, deser he deserves it. As does as the the rest of the cast, honestly, they all did great. Yeah, they all they all did great. Most of the cast, or everything ever, all, most of the the main cast, or everything ever, all at once won, uh, except for one, Stephanie Sue, who uh, was nominated alongside Jamie Lee Curtis. Jamie Lee yeah. Curtis won that one. Uh, that was the next award. Yeah, that th th this is my one award where like I don't know, like like yeah, like, I I get it and. I think Jamie Lee Curtis 100% did a fantastic job in this movie, don't get me wrong. And I love Jamie Lee Curtis. Um, it should have been Stephanie, I, though. It should have been Stephanie, though. <laughs> yeah. It, it really does feel like like what they did with Leo. Where, like, let's, like it's, it's been so long. He's, you know, he's never been nominated. You know, he never won. Jamie Lee Curtis was never even nominated. Let's just give it to her. <laughs> like, you know, let's give her that Oscar. Let's make, you know, let's do it. And, and, and she, it's not to say her performance was bad. She totally like worked hard. Her performance is great, and she deserves the recognition. Um, I just think Stephanie was was a bit better. Yeah, I agree. Um, it it, it kind of sucks that she was put up against her co-star. You know? Oh well, it is kinda, what it is. Yeah, because I yeah, there's there's no like way around it, right? You can't make it so it's limited to one per movie, because then it's not fair to those other actors. Yeah. It was just an unfortunate situation, but uh, Jamie Lee Curtis was great, well deserved. Um, I hope Stephanie gets more opportunities in the future. Now that this movie became the success that it is, uh, maybe she'll get more opportunities in the future to show her stuff and and win an Oscar in the future. Who knows? Yep. I definitely think uh, the four leads here are definitely going to be um, in a lot more movies going forward. Anyways, yeah. uh, uh, mov moving on, the next two awards that were given out were the. Uh, documentary awards the winners were Navalny and an Irish goodbye we haven't seen either of them so can't really comment yeah um can't comment but uh, they were nice award speeches yeah they were really good award speeches um but the award given after that was uh for best cinematography which rightfully went to all quiet on the western front great cinematography on this movie great movie uh, All Quiet on the Western Front won a lot more awards than I thought it would. Yeah, in one four, I think, overall. I think, yeah. That sounds right. But yeah, th this movie's great. Um, I know it's, like, kind of a joke, a bit of a meme. Like, the war movie always wins um, sound to cinematography. Just because they're so... Um, it it's such a realistic sound to, to try to fake. And it's such a grim setting that you have to, like shoot in a way that looks visually appealing while also getting the the icky feeling you know yeah um because you know war war is war and it's not pretty but uh the movie is shot very prettily <laughs> it's very <laughs> beautiful to look at um and uh, this is no no different i think this movie is great yeah it's shot it's shot great and uh, i i thought it would i honestly thought it would sweep more than it did which is saying something because it did a lot already the presenters for this award were uh uh, Michael B. Jordan and Jonathan Majors, and they they surprisingly didn't make any jokes about Creed three, <laughs> even though they were both up there. They they are both up there, and they both kind of like stood, kind of awkwardly. Like I thought they were like the whole time watching them, I felt like they were gonna make a joke. But instead, uh, Michael B. Jordan was just talking about 
uh, because, oh, look, he's a director now, so now he knows about cinematography. Yeah. <laughs> and he showed, like, some camera techniques and stuff. It was kind of cool. Uh, one thing that was really cool with this Oscars, I don't, I can't remember if they did this last year, but when they had the name of the award spelled out on the huge screen, behind it, there were, like, all the previous winners. They were, like, flashing on the screen. And they, they did that for, uh, for cinematography there was like a little tv screen next to michael b jordan and it was showing a bunch of uh past winners of yeah. cinematography one of them being 1917 which was pretty funny <laughs> <laughs> uh but yeah moving on so now we got uh best hair and makeup makeup and hairstyling whatever same same thing i just mix it up that went to the whale yep uh, i you haven't seen the whale yet right no um, I've seen The Whale. I love The Whale. I think it's fantastic. Um, this is kind of a... I don't want to say contentious pick, but it does have some people out there a little bit upset because uh, because of fat suits and everything. Yeah, but, I, um, I, um, I'm not sure if I agree with this uh, uh, award either because a fat suit is not makeup and hairstyling. That, that's costume. That, that would be part of best costume design, wouldn't it? Well, the fat suits are prosthetic, right? And that's kind of... I don't yeah, know. Well, they, like, the, the face part, like the head, that's definitely with the makeup. But the rest of the... Anything below the neck is a costume. Yeah, which is, it wasn't nominated. Yeah. Uh, the, what, were, what were the nominees for this one? Uh, it was uh, All Quiet on the Western Front, uh, The Batman, Wakanda Forever, and uh, Elvis. I think Elvis was the, the audience pick, probably. Yeah, this was my pick, too, was Elvis... Um, I think there's an argument you can make for the Batman, but I don't know. Like, yeah, or... not really. Uh, the 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 example they showed on screen when they said the Batman was the Penguin's uh, prosthetics, which is what I thought it would be for. Mm -hmm. uh, and Bla you could also make a, a an argument for Black Panther. Yeah. But I I don't know. Like the whale, the whale winning is it's a good win. Like it was a good pick. Yeah, like, I wouldn't argue with it, but, like, the other option, it's a, it's a tight race, you know? Yeah. Which is true of a lot of these these awards. Um, it's pretty tight. Uh, but this one, this one was one of the cringe moments because they cut off the speaker. Yeah. <laughs> they played, they played her off the stage. And they made, they made this joke at the beginning, Jimmy Kill made a joke at the beginning that if you, if your speech takes too long... Then they're gonna bring out the dancers from RRR to play you off, and uh, well, they didn't bring out the dancers because obviously that was, that was a joke, but they did play her off. <laughs> yeah, that happened I think twice or three times, and I I still don't like it. It still feels dirty to me whenever it happens. Yeah, um, I get it though. Like you don't want the show to go for too long. Um, every year the Oscars goes on past its runtime without fail. Yeah, the, it was so supposed you... to end at eleven thirty. It ended at twelve thirty. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It wasn't twelve thirty. It was like yeah, eleven forty-five. No, it was twelve thirty. No, 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 it wasn't. It was like eleven forty-five. I was. I got home at like one a.m. Yeah, I heard. <laughs> I also. I mean, I also got home late, man. Yeah. You know. <laughs> uh, I'm sure you did. I'm sure you did. Yeah. I. So I. I get it, but I think especially in 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 the cases where there was more than one person who was accepting that award, maybe give both people time to speak. Yeah. Uh, and like, the, like when the Daniels won their the awards, or when they went up to go speak anywhere, they did let both of them speak. So it's kind of weird that like, like they they I I don't think it's a pick and choose scenario. I think these people just got unlucky, and 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 they got uh, played off, which sucks. But uh, I hope they enjoyed their Oscar and they enjoyed their moment being on stage, and and were happy to accept their award. Yeah. Uh. So the award that was given out after that. Uh, was for best costume design, which was given to Black Panther: Wakanda Forever. I think, uh, yeah, that was that was my pick. Uh, well, I had that and Elvis written down, uh, but I think my main pick was Black Panther. This was this was good, good pick. I think uh, I put Elvis. I don't remember. I don't have my list in front of me, but um, um, yeah, no, I think the costumes look good in, in Black Panther. I like not even just the the superhero -y costumes, but I think even the, like, cultural costumes all look great. Um, like, the, the cultural outfits, and they, they did a good job on nailing that aspect of representing the each culture in the movie, in each country in the movie, well. I have yeah. no, I have no debate for this. I think it's, it's well-deserved. Yeah, it's good. Um, Mar Marvel movies don't tend to get awards 
Um, but this one definitely deserved that. Marvel movies usually only get best costume design, usually. I think, like, Logan is the only superhero movie, aside from maybe The Dark Knight. They got nominated for, like, best, like, best screenplay or something. I yeah. forget what Logan was nominated for. But, like, Logan and I The Dark Logan Knight. I think Logan was like... cinematography, I'm pretty sure. Maybe. maybe. Uh, yeah, and like... and uh, I know The Dark Knight, uh, uh, Heath Ledger was best supporting actor. You, you, don't, you don't get a lot of cape shit at this show, because the cape shit, like, animation is not cinema, apparently. Yeah, apparently not. <laughs> but, uh, moving on. We got more awards to talk about. Yeah, so the next award was Best International Feature Film. Uh, just like last year, Best International Feature Film is kind of a a ditto category because whatever, if if there's an international film nominated for Best Picture, it's gonna win Best International Feature Film. There's no debate. It has to. Because if it doesn't, then that movie doesn't deserve to be in Best Picture, according to their logic. Yeah. And so, like, in, in like, the rare case, which has never happened... Uh, two movies from the international category are nominated for Best Picture, then maybe there's a conversation to be had. But in this case, it was just all quiet on the Western Front. This movie was a Best Picture nominee. Therefore, uh, Germany won. <laughs> there was no contest. Yeah. Which kind of sucks for the people playing the Oscars game. But uh, deser- but it's also a great movie, so they deserved, honestly. Yeah, great. it is a really good movie. You know, every time uh, every time the movie won an award, it played that, you know, one song from the from the movie. Brr, 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 every single the, time. Uh, the start of Metroid 1. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna die on that hill. Uh, um, so, next... We, uh, skipped over, we skipped over... No. Best live action and best animated short film, I think? No, that's next. That's right after. Oh, is it? Okay, my Twitter is weird. All right. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, next up is um, best the, the the two short film categories: animated short film and documentary short film. Uh, the animated one was given to the boy, the mole, the fox, and the horse, and uh, the documentary was given to the elephant whispers. Haven't seen either of these. Again, we didn't watch any of the short films. They they showed off some footage of the elephants, and I think they're very cute. They yeah. were they were small little baby elephants, and I wanna I wanna. I hope I hope nothing bad happens it. to those elephants in the. Yeah, I, I would like to hug them if they wouldn't kill me on sight. <laughs> uh, so now, what was given out right after uh, for best production design again? The war movie wins this one. All quiet yeah. on the Western Front, rightfully so, because uh, the it's really hard to get an authentic looking war setting, and All Quiet on the Western Front does it perfectly. I don't like I. I don't know if uh, the the production design between All Quiet on the Western Front or 1917, I can't tell which one is better. I'm going to say 1917, but I, I don't know. I think All Quiet on the Western Front portrays the the ugly part of the war better. And 1917 uh, is like the like rough as nails, tough part of the war. This Like the scary part. Sure. I don't disagree. Also, it's better in the cinematography for sure. Nineteen seventeen. I, uh, I want to talk about. We haven't really been getting into them for all the categories, just because uh, there's a lot of movies. But I want to talk about uh, the other nominees for this one, only because I, like, I this is a partially a joke. I know Avatar had a set, but <laughs> does Avatar really deserve this uh, nominee? That's nominee? true. Yeah, like, like I, I know Avatar had to have had a set. Real people were there for the production of this movie. It's not 100% CG. Yeah, it was mocap. It's all mocap. And and I I didn't see Avatar. I'm sure Avatar is beautiful. I'm sure the the the, the locations in Avatar are jaw droppingly gorgeous. They are. But they're all CG. Does it really deserve to be on the same platform as something like All Quiet or um, my pick, uh, Babylon? But. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think Avatar deserves this spot. Yeah, it didn't win, so it doesn't matter. But that's just my two cents <laughs> being thrown out there. And uh, mentioning Avatar, um, because since so we talked about this in the bonus episode that Marcel the Show with Shoes on, uh, counts for best animated feature film. But why doesn't Avatar count? I guess now's a good time to talk about that. Yeah, like like. Why does Marcel count, which is largely a live-action movie, aside from Marcel? The stop motion used on the shell characters. That's it. And, and like, yeah, it's impressive to look at for sure. And it is animated, 
But like the movie overall isn't animated. It's it's a live action movie with like is is um is Avatar not animated? Is that what they're saying? Like cuz CG is animation. That is animation. They're doing animation. Is it because it's all motion capture? But you're animating above the motion capture. So it's still being animated. All the backgrounds are animated. And they're animated beautifully. This is a kind of a shitposty question, but it relates to the topic. Um, would you consider something like Space Jam an animated movie? See, like, I don't know. I don't know. Like, it, it, like same with the... Or... Looney um, Tunes back in action. Looney Tunes back in action, or uh, um, Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Are those it's animated com- movies? I, I think that the difference in what qualifies it as animation versus a live action movie is is stuff like Looney Tunes back in action and Space Jam are drawn animated character, or whatever, purely animated characters interacting in a live action setting versus something like Avatar, which yes, like they're they're cg is plastered over their body but it's still shot in live action with motion capture because where do you let's like here's the thing right and again this is a shit post the example but like the the core of the technology that was used to animate something like avatar is the same thing they did with like a megan fox in the transformers movies is that animated i i don't think so so i i think i i think i'm leaning i'm, I'm siding with the academy on this one where I think the, the the line in the sand, the definition of what's animated versus what's not animated, is something that starts 100% an, a cartoon or whatever, an animation, versus something like Avatar, which is shot and then enhanced later, right? Yeah. Because, like, the Marvel movies also fall in that category, right? Are Marvel movies animated? They're, no, right? Like in in in, um, in Infinity War, like the Iron Spider is completely CG. Is Spider Man animated in that movie? Like, no, it's you know. So I think that's the line where like that's how we're gonna have to separate it. At least that's how I think the Academy is justifying it is because Avatar was shot, whereas Bugs Bunny in Space Jam: A New Legacy is drawn or whatever. That's the difference. I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well. Well, let's uh, move, let's uh, Ted Marcel doesn't fall into either category because it's stop motion. <laughs> yeah, Mar- Marcel. Well, the, the Pinocchio is also stop motion. Yeah, but they're different kinds of stop motion, right? Like Pinocchio is clearly an animated movie, whereas Marcel is an animated character in a live action setting. Anyway, that's yeah. this is going on <laughs> for longer than I wanted it to. Um, but yeah, that's that's uh, it's interesting to talk about. I think that's what the Academy is doing to do it yeah uh so next up we got uh the award for best original score and it was given to all quiet on the western front this i don't agree with you know like the intro to metroid one no i love the intro to metroid one but is that that's it's like it's like the uh it's like the marvel spider-man ps4 argument there's only one song <laughs> it's, a, it's a banger though it's yeah. There's only one song. It's a banger. But I think like I would take the soundtrack for Skyrim over the soundtrack for Spider-Man any day. This the 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 that one song in Spider-Man is really 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 good. But what's better, one super good song or like fifty really good songs? Yeah, I'm I'm trying to lower the other. Let me find the category. I know, like, like the Batman. Well, I don't think this was even nominated for this category. It should have been. Yeah, we but talked it about it. Should have been. Yeah, we talked about it in the uh, in our bonus episode. The Batman really should have been nominated for this category. Best original score is like it, that. That was the Batman's category, and it got snubbed. It got snubbed for something stupid, like I don't know. Fuck the Fablemans. <laughs> yeah, like, like Babylon is also like a really, really good choice here. I, I don't think I agree with this one very well. I like the song, but um, I think out of like you know, like you said, I think um, you know, I'd rather have uh, a full soundtrack of of pretty good songs versus one really good song. You know. Yeah, and like we know, there's more songs than just burr, 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 and all quiet on the Western Front, but. The only thing you know from that movie is burr, burr, burr. Am I am I wrong? <laughs> I need to make you like after the recording, I need to make you listen to the intro to Metroid One. Just, I um, know the intro to Metroid One. <laughs> I, 
because I no, because I think you think I'm crazy for making that comparison. No, I don't think you're crazy. You're right. It's it sounds like the intro to Metroid One. Um, and but I think the win should have gone to Everything Everywhere All at Once, or the Banshees yeah. of Anishin because I really like the. Uh, I don't know what the name of the. It's like a guitar, but it's not actually a guitar. It's like a different kind of string instrument. I forgot what it's called, but like that instrument they used is great. Like the 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 whole soundtrack is great. It's very touching, very slow, mellow. It's great. And then everything over all at once, like you got those like slower mellow tracks, but uh, then right after you got those huge bombastic tracks for the fight scenes, and then you got those mysterious like like uh, otherworldly tracks when you show when you when you show those uh, other uh, universes going on. It, it's very there's there's the touching ones where they they speak to like when uh, uh, when. The Michelle Yeoh speaks to her father when she speaks to Baba or when she speaks to Stephanie. It's it's all great soundtrack and it just got snubbed for brr, brr, brr. I don't get it. It it shouldn't <laughs> it shouldn't. I think the um the be kind speech and, and everything ever all at once is it might be my favorite scene in any movie ever. Yeah. And it, it only works the way it does because of the smooth the music. It, it's still not my pick. But just to say how good the the the, the score of uh, everything everywhere all at once is, I don't know if I agree with this pick. Not broken up about it, but I don't know if I agree with it either. Yeah. Uh, but the moving on, the next uh, award that was given out was for visual effects, and it was presented by um, Cocaine, Cocaine Bear. <laughs> I like how the disgusting films posted. Uh, Cocaine Bear has arrived at the Oscars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's just this this picture with no context is like the funniest like thing. I've, I you've seen it. We all watched it live, but like just just imagine you're like just you went about your day and you see this. Like I said, that in Limbs DMs. This like it's so fucking funny. <laughs> like the and and they they actually like this was a funny joke and it would have been cringe if it was for any other category. But it makes sense to put it in visual effects because later on. Uh, after this was when, like, it was, like, the midpoint of the show, and this is when Jimmy Kimmel went in the crowd and did some jokes, uh, and he was, he was pointing out that, like, if, if it weren't for the visual effects team on a movie, Cocaine Bear would have looked like that. <laughs> and it's, he looks yeah, great, that makes okay? sense. He looks, he looks good, he looks good, okay? He did his best. He did his hair that morning. I respect it. Let's hope that Cocaine Bear gets nominated for an Oscar next year. <laughs> Better. I want it, best picture. Best picture going to Cocaine Bear, and then the year after, best picture, uh, I mean, uh, best adapted screenplay going to uh, Cocaine Shark. We got to do that. <laughs> but um, the reason we're, we're, uh, we're talking about Cocaine Bear instead of the winner of this category is because it's, you know, it's the VFX award. Uh, Avatar is nominated. That movie was made to win this award. There's nothing left to say. I, I just saw a, a comment on, on Twitter. It was uh, like... Because the, of the 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 tweets we retweeted from the Academy, it was like the and the Oscar goes to Avatar: The Ray of the Water for best visual effects. And one of the comments is that <laughs> that movie looked so good it made me wish water was real. <laughs> so true. <laughs> I, I was scrolling through because we're we're going off our Twitter post to know the order that they did on the show, and that after this was Rihanna's performance that lifts me up, which made me remember that uh, we didn't talk about the performances up to this point. Oh, that's I believe true. They, yeah. they performed a Natu Natu already at this point, and I think Lady Gaga had also already performed. No, no, no. Uh, no, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Lady Gaga was first, I think. I don't think she was first, but she was definitely before Rihanna. Oh, no, no. Uh, applause was first. Applause yeah, from not... Tell It Like a Woman. That was first. That was a pretty good performance. Um, I, I just like, oh, hold on, I could check the order. It's on, uh, it's on our Instagram account because I posted about the, uh, the performances. Yeah, I believe they did not to not to next. Yeah, then the it first, was then it was um Yeah, the first the, the first performance was applause. Oh, oh they by the way, if you guys don't know if this was your first time watching the Oscars, uh they always perform the five nominees for best original song. Uh so that's what they did. Uh so the first performance was applause uh which was for it was Diane Warren. Yeah, Diane Warren, I think, was the one that performed. That's what it says on, on the website. So if I'm wrong, 
it's not me okay it says music and lyrics by diane warren all right <laughs> um and then after that was oh yeah it was the performance for this is a life from everything ever all at once a song that i forgot was in the movie uh, and the performer had the hot dog fingers. <laughs> yep, and uh, Stephanie Sue was on stage with him. Yeah, she sang it. It was really great. Uh, and then... Oh, yeah, they brought back Jenny! They brought Jenny! <laughs> but, no, but it wasn't, it wasn't really Jenny. Yeah, it wasn't really Jenny. They, they, they brought a random donkey, and it said emotional support donkey. <laughs> they lied. They said it was Jenny. <laughs> Uh, I'm sure they couldn't. Uh, they uh, Jimmy Kimmel made a joke about getting Jenny on Spirit Airlines. <laughs> I love Jenny. Jenny is the best donkey ever. They should have had an award for best animal. <laughs> uh, they have to give best animal to Butkus every year, even though he's not around anymore. Uh, and then they performed Natu Natu, which is great. I love uh, RRR. I love Natu Natu. RRR is one of my new favorite movies right now it's my second favorite uh musical right now i love it you should that watch the, it the first time i saw not to not to i heard it and i really really enjoyed it it was a lot of fun i need to watch rrr at some point it's so good it's so good um and then uh then they performed uh lift me up and then hold my hand i think was the order I, th I think Lady Gaga was before Rihanna. Okay, it was Hold My Hand and then Lift Me Up. I'm pretty sure. Whatever. That... One of them performed, and then the other one performed. <laughs> yeah, I liked, I liked both. I thought they were both great. <laughs> yeah, they, they were they were both really good performances. They're both, like, songs that were, like, in the credits of the movie. Uh, but still, really, really great performances. This was, like, the first time Rihanna... Well, the first time Rihanna performed in, like, ten years was at the 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 super bowl. super bowl uh so and like during the red carpet show the hosts were like so what are you most looking forward to this year and then and they everybody's like oh rihanna i can't wait to see rihanna <laughs> it, was, it was funny because but I, but I also i get it right like if daft punk ever reunites you know i'm going to whatever event they're going to even if i don't care about <laughs> what the event is for i just want to see daft punk live you know it's like, like i get it it's like, oh no, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing who wins best picture. I'm looking forward to seeing the awards. And uh, no, no, no one said that. It was, oh, I want to watch Rihanna. Uh, Rihanna. <laughs> I mean, her performance is really good. I think the song is really good too. So you know, I'm biased because first, I don't like "Lift Me Up," and second, I have no emotional connection to Rihanna whatsoever. That's fair. I do like the the Top Gun, like the song more, and Lady Gaga song more. Yeah, I also, um, hold my I hand. I prefer the the other song in Top Gun Maverick. So yeah, that is biased though because it's it's a genre I prefer. Moving on, uh, the next award that was given out, uh, we talked about all the performances. So let's just, I mean, this wasn't the next award, so let's just talk about who won uh, best original song. It was not to not to deserved. Yeah, it was really good. Very deserved. RRR should have gotten a nomination for. Uh, for best picture and and best cinematography it's such a good movie i don't understand how it lost uh the nomination i don't understand it but the one award it did get nominated for it did win so i'm still happy <laughs> uh, yeah i have nothing to say i agree you should watch it you should watch, <laughs> should watch not to, not not to know you should watch rr <laughs> yeah well uh, tonight we'll, so we'll see uh, if you watch it tonight, I want to watch it again. So <laughs> let, sure. let, watch it with me. Uh, but the one that was given, the award that was given after visual effects was uh, best uh, writing for an original screenplay, which rightfully was given to everything, everywhere, all at once. The Daniels did a great fucking job with this movie. It couldn't have gone to anything else, honestly. Yeah, no, I, I don't think so. The, the the only thing that came close was uh, uh, the Banshees of Anishirin. Yeah, I, and I think that one was was pretty close, but not it just misses the mark a little bit. Yeah, we we've talked about E E O O A a lot. I uh, said that wrong. E E whatever. E E E E A. No, it's E E A A O. <laughs> a A O. Okay, whatever. My brain's small. Um. Yeah, it's really good. Um. We we've talked about that movie a lot, so you probably already know how we feel. Definitely deserves this award. Yeah, check out our uh, review on the movie if you want to hear more. Yeah, and go see it for yourself if you haven't seen it for some reason. Yeah, Please go do. watch it. 
<laughs> Seriously, but, uh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> yeah, following uh, original screenplay, we have best adapted screenplay. Um, I thought um, warmovie.jpg had this one in the bag, but uh, I was pleasantly surprised uh, it was Woman Talking. Yeah, Woman Talking was adapted from a novel of the same name, and it was a pretty good adaptation. I liked the movie. It was uh, it was a fun watch. I didn't love it, but I liked it. Yeah, you know, it was like it was like a, it was a you know a, obligatory women rights movement movie, for the Oscars. You know, there's always one, and this one was actually a good pick. It was a good one. Yeah, yeah. it was a really good pick. And uh, speaking of um, picks, I didn't see coming. We have uh, best sound next. Yeah, best sound, which was the only award that was won by Top Gun Maverick. No, no. Okay, I love this movie. I'm a huge shill for this movie. Um, I, people in my personal life are tired of me talking about three movies. Any Spider-Man movie, a Rocky movie, or this one. Because <laughs> I talk about it constantly. I love Top Gun Maverick. I don't know if it was... I mean, I, I get the pick, but uh, I had my vote on um, How Quiet. I had mine on The Batman. Uh, but this was great. Yeah, I, I get the sound in here. You know, the jets, the, the, the action. You know, they, they had to... CG, what's what's the CG equivalent for sound? They had to like, what's the, there's a term for that? Sound. <laughs> it's called they sound. Had, they had to create <laughs> sounds that come out of Tom Cruise's mouth, so he wouldn't say things that can't be said on film because he's weird and he's Tom Cruise. <laughs> everybody, everybody at the at the Oscars was talking about Tom Cruise saving cinema. That's such that's such a huge stretch. I don't I don't know if that's true. I, I agree to a point because Top Gun Maverick did bring people back to theaters after COVID. Like movies came out before Top Gun Maverick, obviously, you know, it came out two two years into COVID. You know, movies movies came out, but everybody thought it was going to be Tenet that quote unquote revived cinema. It was going to be Nolan, and then they thought it was going to be a Marvel movie. But it always just barely didn't reach those numbers that they wanted it to. And then Top Gun Maverick happened. And everybody went to go see Top Gun Maverick. You yeah. listening right now. You may not have seen Top Gun Maverick. But you've seen Top Gun Maverick. Yeah. <laughs> like. I, I think like. It's not just Tom Cruise right. There, there's. There's like uh, no, like you like you there. mentioned with uh, with Marvel. I think that like Phase Four trailer that was like "See you at the movies." That that brought up back some more hype of going to the movies after uh, after COVID. Maybe, but but I, but this one is the one that like got the numbers though. Yeah, like Top Gun Maverick did beyond what was expected of it in terms of sales, and it was in theaters for a long time. It was, and and it got it got three different reruns. At least where we live over here, it got three different rerun reruns. Like like Avatar is still doing its theatrical run, but like this movie is probably gonna have been in theaters for longer than Avatar. You know, you know what I I watch. Okay, so the, there's this uh this is YouTuber. His name is the uh, Cosmonaut Variety Hour. Yeah, um, I, I, I know Marcus. Yeah, I know. I'm saying it for people who don't know him. Yeah, he. He makes really good videos, and he's Marcus. He makes really good videos. You guys should check him out. He's really funny. Uh, today he posted a video, uh, talking about like the just the MCU fatigue and how bad Phase Four was, and he he said something that I didn't even notice, and I completely agree. It's that if you watch any Phase Four movie by yourself on your TV at home, you realize that there's so many like points in the movie where no one's talking and it's super quiet and those points are meant for the theater to be like yeah you know and if you watch that at home it's just so awkward because you're like like toby Maguire comes out of the the portal and it's just like a, a there's like a five five second long dolly shot just zooming into his face and nobody's saying anything and then it cuts to 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 mj and um and Ned and and they're just like oh 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 my god it's like what it's it's meant for the theater when you watch that at home you're just like what what move on what what is this all this empty space it's so awkward i never even noticed that well, you you don't notice it because you're watching it in theaters for the yeah, most yeah and when yes yeah, so you watch it in theaters 
but and then you got that huge blowout, like whoa, like when uh, when Mister Fantastic showed up in uh, Multiverse of Madness, and the the whole theater was like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But then I go, like I I I I haven't rewatched the movie, but like I like he showed the clip in the video. It was like, and he was like, I'm gonna play the clip. Uh, just the audio of the movie, nothing else. It's as if you're watching the movie. And it's just, uh, it's like, uh, and the smartest man in the world, what, Reed Richards. And then he c- shows up, he closes the portal, it's like a dolly shot zoom in on his face for like five seconds, and then he's like, Hello, Doctor. It, it, Marvel, Marvel movies now, especially post-Endgame, which is weird, because Endgame's Endgame, right? But, like, like... Now it's like they're shot like they're events. Yeah. They're not they're not presented to you like a movie. It's like you're reading a comic book event. You know? Yeah. And it's it's weird when you notice things because now you're aware of it. <laughs> and, and it's gonna bother you next time. And unlike a movie like Top Gun Maverick, yeah. <laughs> which if you're not screaming, it's screaming at you. <laughs> so, which is why I won best sound <laughs> there's no there's no time to stop and gawk because while you are Tom Cruise is doing some other crazy shit and he's <laughs> yelling at you while you're while you're gawking you know so <laughs> all right well the next uh we we got off topic there so let's uh let's move yeah, on. If, you guys should watch uh Cosmonaut Variety Hour great great guy um so moving on the next award that was given out was for directing. All right, this was given to Daniel, the Daniels for uh, everything if we're all at once. Very deserved, great award, great movie, great everything. Is best fucking movie yeah. ever made. <laughs> great, great pick. Um, but this is when the show kind of ended for me. We talked about it while it was happening, but like I, by this point, this movie won best editing, won best directing. Uh, spoilers it's gonna win best, best picture actress <laughs> and one best supporting actor <laughs> one best supporting actress those are the big ones it has to win best picture right so that like that i'm like okay yeah like it, it won like there's no you don't win best editing and direction and not win best picture and not win best picture <laughs> especially especially you don't win best editing direction and performances <laughs> and not best picture but it's okay because there was only three awards left by this point. There were three awards left, and I wanted this movie to win Best Picture, so I didn't. I, whatever, I don't mind. But like, it did take me out of the show a little bit. Like, yeah, okay, I won. You know. Yeah. But uh, moving on, we have um, something not to everything. I mean, we're all at once related because we have uh, Best Leading Actor. That movie doesn't have one. This category was safe from the Daniels. <laughs> <laughs> um. And uh, Lib and I did not agree on who we thought would win, but um, Brendan Fraser won, who was my pick. He won for The Whale. Yep. Very, very happy he won. His speech made me uh, a little a little emotional. I'm really happy he, he bounced back, you know? Because um, for those who don't know, I'm not going to get into it here. It's not the place for it. But if you know, seeing him on this stage accepting this award just feels good. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, like I that wasn't my pick. Like uh, I, I thought I really thought it was gonna be Austin Butler. I was, I was so, I was so sure that it was gonna be Austin Butler that I was gonna put money on it. You know, like that's how sure I was. I would have put money on it if I could, because it's an Oscars performance. Like Elvis was Oscar bait, and spoiler alert, didn't win any Oscars. <laughs> Good, I'm happy. But yeah, it is Oscar bait, and and Austin Butler was fantastic. Don't get me wrong, but uh, Brendan Fraser had this in my, in my heart. Yeah, it was a good pick. Uh, and then moving on to Best Actress in a Leading Role. Uh, again, I really thought it was going to be Kate Blanchett for Tar. No, I was there from frame one. <laughs> Michelle Yeoh. My Michelle goat. Yeoh. <laughs> and, uh, she also gave a beautiful speech. <clears throat> yeah, she she gave a great speech. I can't wait to see her and uh, Ki Hoi Kwan and... Uh, Americans, what's it called again? Americans born American Chinese. Ra- American, I think it's American born or American raised Chinese. I don't remember. Yeah, and it was American born Chinese. That's what it was. Yeah. It's gonna be nice to see them again. Stephanie Sue as well. Yeah, it's gonna be on Disney Plus. I can't. I can't remember if it was a movie or a show, but it's gonna be on Disney Plus. 
Yeah, she she really deserved this. Again, this is also her first Oscar. Yeah, which that's is true. crazy because because she's been in the industry for so long. Um, but yeah, deserved. She gave this beautiful speech about you know never never feeling like you you're you've aged past your prime. I give a beautiful speech for space for speech. My God, for for women and and you know, the Asian community and and just everybody it felt it felt good. It was a nice speech. Mayhaps my favorite speech of the night. Yeah, maybe. May, yeah. Mayhaps. 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 And now okay. we have the big one. The big one. The close off for the night. Best picture presented by. Uh, oh yeah, presented by uh, uh, Ertin Ford. Yeah, and he got up there and he was like. So um, here is the award for best picture. <laughs> best fucking movie. <laughs> and the, like, as soon as he said, eh, everybody yeah. in the in the room, we were just like, yes. We all we all popped off. It was it was a wild. It, it was recorded. It's on the uh, it's on our Instagram story. Check it out. But uh, it, it was just everything over all at once. Wins best picture this year, uh, predicted and deserved. It was nice to to see everybody run up on stage too. Um, Harrison Ford and uh, Kihei Kwan um, got got to share a little hug. Yeah, because they they shared they shared the they shared the screen in in Indiana Jones, and that was it was really cute. Uh, also, um, Ki- Kihei Kwan and Brendan Fraser shared the screen as well at one point. I forgot what the name and, of the movie uh, was. At one point, Kiwi Kwan went running up to Spielberg during the show and, and gave him a hug and stuff, and it was cute. Yeah, uh, it wasn't it was a nice show for for a b- big day for the fans of everything everywhere all at once, you know. Yeah, and uh, and now I can't wait for everybody next year to be like that movie was so overrated it won too many. Oh, it's already awards. happening. It's already <laughs> happening. <laughs> um, yeah, so everything everywhere all at once grant won a grand total of seven awards that night. Um, not the most uh, a movie has ever gotten awarded for but it's tied for third or second or something like that uh, i won a lot and it's, it's the most awarded movie ever yeah that's true it's the most awarded movie ever it, it was that before the oscars too which is nuts but now it, and now it's like that plus right seven there. you know and <laughs> um there were four movies that were nominated for best picture that didn't win any awards as banshees of initiative elvis the fablemans and tar didn't win anything Three of those movies being fantastic, like four to five, five star movies. Yeah, and one of them being Elvis. And one of them being Elvis. <laughs> but uh, that goes to show just how tight the race was. Very, very solid year for the Oscars. Very solid for the show and for the awards. Um, I had a great time. Yeah, there's this great, there's a great photo of uh, all of the acting award winners all together. And it's just like three of the cast, everything ever, all at once, plus Brendan Fraser. <laughs> He'll be in the next one. He'll be in uh, everything, everything ever, all at, all at twice. At <laughs> all twice. All at twice. And uh, yeah, that was that was the show. Great, yeah, it was great. Yeah, it was great. And at the they, at the end of the of the show, uh, Jimmy Kimmel he did it. He did a great like closing speech. It was great. It was really funny. And uh, at the end, there was like the the last shot. Was him going up to a board that says like number of Oscar shows without an incident zero? He changed it to one. <laughs> yeah, because you know we all we all thought they were gonna joke about the slap, joke about the slap, and they did. They took a couple of shots. They took a couple of shots at Will across the show. Like the, I think the like that's the most I've ever laughed at uh, at the Oscars was that closing speech by uh by Jimmy Kimmel. Was it was that that last part where he. Changed the, like the the sign for Oscars without incidents, but also where he was like, uh, "Good job, Crisis Crew. You guys did good. You did your job. You're getting a bonus next month." <laughs> that was good. I honestly like. I thought they were gonna make more jokes about it, and and maybe if this was last year, they would have. But I'm happy they didn't, because you know, not to slap a dead horse or anything. <laughs> they did everything pretty much by the book this year, which is good. Uh, that's what that's what I've. This is what I've been wanting from the Oscars, and it was a really fun show. And I think I honestly think this is the the best Oscar show of uh, of the twenty twenties. Even though there's only been three, but you know, I, best, agree. I think is uh, yeah. Let's let's extend it to two thousand tens because that those Oscars weren't that amazing either. So the best, I think it's the best Oscars 
of of uh, the 2010s of of the past 2010. I think I even think it's better than the 2020 Oscars. And the 2020 mm-hmm. Oscars were fucking amazing. Like that was the one with 1917, Jojo Rabbit, uh, Parasite, all all those great movies. Like yeah, it's definitely I, the most uh, fun I had watching the Oscars in, in a good while. Yeah, it was great. Pleasant, pleasantly surprised on how good this Oscars was. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. We're we're not going to be talking about TV shows, and we're not going to do backlogs this episode. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna do that next episode where we will be talking about creed 3 and super bad uh, but that's gonna be it for this episode thank you guys so much for listening uh, if you liked it and you want to hear more then make sure to follow us on whatever app you're using to listen to our lovely voices right now if you're listening on spotify then make sure to scroll down and uh tell us what you thought about the episode in the little q a box let us know what you like what you didn't like we just want to hear your opinion same thing uh goes if you're watching us on youtube scroll down to the comments and let us know what you think uh and if you want to let us know about what movie we should do next you could do that on our form on the link tree linktr.ee slash fresh off the reel no spaces no caps uh you can fill out that form to recommend us a movie or a tv show and then we'll make an episode about it uh on that link tree you could also find our socials Twitter and the Instagram and our letterbox accounts to keep up with what movies we've been watching. Um, but with that being said, that's going to be it. So we will see all of you in a theater near you. Bye bye. Take care, everybody. The sound test has begun. This is a test of sound. I'm currently scrolling down the fresh off the real Twitter. To find the start. All right, the first one was animated picture. Yeah. Hmm. James Gunn is officially directing Superman Legacy. I'm just reading the first thing that showed up on Twitter for the sound test. True. He is directing that. Uh, Shazam: Fury of the Gods got a 70% on Rotten Tomatoes. Not bad. That's gonna drop by 20% when it officially releases to the public. I I've, I've never I didn't watch the first one. I have no idea. First one's fine. I'd, 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 I'd recommend the first one. I think it's, I what think it's... the fuck? <laughs> what? Ice Age is 21 years old today. That's That upsets me. <laughs> oh. I was there. I was there, Lib. I was... I was only a few months off. I was only a few months off from being there. Oh, wow. I'm, I'm upset. I guess that's a test of sound. Yeah, that's the sound. <laughs>